so guys yesterday uh, we did security context in that security context we created we first change the mode and then we say mac address auto also very important i told you what is the reason why we do mac address auto cuz we are allocating our interfaces to multiple contexts or multiple departments hr it so whenever there is an art request coming in from those interfaces let me show you on switch so mac address table dynamic so see if you are looking at e0 by 0 you can see there are two mac addresses physical interface is only one but you can see two virtual mac addresses so when vlan 10 requested for a mac address got this mac address on e0 by 0 e0 by 0 is actually trunk interface configured between asa and switch 1 okay so you will see multiple virtual mac addresses being received for a particular arp request okay so r3 belongs to vlan 10 when he try to request he will get different mac address when r4 try to request so when i say show r okay you see on uh, once we start the connectivity we can see that so mac address auto means i am requesting my firewall that you generate many such virtual mac addresses for sub interface so yesterday we configured two contexts one was hr where i allocated hr interface with a physical interface e0 and also for it i allocated e0 then i went for inside it so e1.10 is being given to hr and e1.20 sub interface being given to it so see e1 is only one physical interface being allocated to hr also and it also and i can give it to many such other contexts also then i gave e2 interface to hr also and it also as a dmz so my vlan for dmz was 30 and 40 so this is my system firewall when i say write mem all means i am saving all my configuration in the flash memory as per the name given during the creation of context i said any time when i save my configuration in hr context it should go to hr.c any time i save the configuration to it it should go to it.c any time so so backup uh, taking backup of this configuration becomes easy because easily i can take a backup of hr and it context okay so this is my system firewall where i can't configure any ip address but yes i can do failover i can configure admin context i can create hr context okay and if you remember we allocated e5 as a management interface we configured the address so when i go to uh, hr context case sensitive and say show run i can see e0 the name is outside 20 and i allowed certain traffic to come in to this server which is 10.1.30.2 even i can do nat so when i say show accelerate i can see at present i just did this and then i did 
So in this access list that I've created on HR, I have applied, uh, allowed telnet, allowed HTTP traffic and IP. Okay. And when I say show route, I can see I can ping directly my exit in uh, default gateway that is R1, that is my perimeter route. Now I can go directly from here to IT. And yesterday we never saved this configuration or never did this configuration. I said we'll continue tomorrow. So I go to E0 and say, boss, your IP address is 2112. Remember, one is given to HR context. So two is being given to IT context. Dot five is given to R1. Then I say, 1.20, I am giving it to inside interface. And the subnet is the name if is DMZ. If you see the diagram, 30.2 and 40.2, so 30 network and 40 network. So when I say show interface IP brief, can I ping my gateway? Yes. Can I ping internet? There is no route. So I say route outside. Next hop. And then I go to internet. I can ping in. Okay. So when I say show route, Show run. Now what? This is a different box. So I said out in permit TCP. No, I just say ICMP. Anybody who wants to do ICMP to 10.40.2, allow. Access group out dash in. So show interface IP brief, show security, uh, show uh, interface detail, you can see. Show name if when you say show name if you can see the interface, the names of the interface and the security level. So here I did mistake. You see, DMZ is showing zero. So I'll make it fifty. I told you recommendation. So when I say show name if. 0150. Change to system. Right. Bam. All. So when I say show flash, you can see IT configuration is saved. The clock is different. You can change the clock. Clock time zone. 
तो AMT plus five thirty clock set seventeen twenty eight. for 21st march okay this 1727 to make it more perfect so when i say show clock Today, March twenty first. So flash. So now, whatever I do, seventeen twenty eight. Now I try to get the access from R seven. My branch PC. <coughs> so I said telnet ten dot one dot thirty dot two. HRDMG server. Telnet is already there. It's not going. So I say change to contacts. Okay. When I say show access list, you can see there is one hit coming. The thing is, my R one router. Should also have a route pointing towards ten, and to reach ten network or to reach ten dot one dot thirty network, you should have a route via twenty one one one, and for forty network, it should go to twenty one one two. And not this one. Getting it show IP route setting. So IP IP brief. So IP route. So in order to reach ten dot one dot thirty network, go to twenty dot one dot one. Or To reach forty network, go to ten dot one dot forty. Now let's do once again. So you see, when I say show C O N N detail, I can see the connection is established from source one seventy two sixteen ten dot two. B M G ten dot one dot thirty dot two on port twenty three U I O B. U means up, I means inbound, O means outbound, and B means initial sync from outside. And when I say show access list, I can see it's a hits are there. I can even do ping to ten dot one dot thirty dot two. Can see, and if I want to see the connection, I say show C O N N D T. Can see, I C M P. Okay, just one minute.
can see the screen all of you so when i said so when i say show access list you can see it counts are there now i will change the context and go to all the three services i can use this one also So when I say show access list, I can see it count here. But the same case is not with IT. Here I have only allowed ping. So when 10.1.40 try, uh, sorry, 172, 16.10.2 try to do ping to 40.2, it's working. And when I say show access this, it's working. And then when he tried to do telnet, it's not working because there's no policy. can also put uh, a policy for deny and check it, the logs. can see it's up. See, you know all those basic things. I'm not repeating the how to create policy and how to apply. I'm just showing you that two different contexts, two different contexts, server traffic, two different con, con, uh, contexts, land traffic being properly handled by ASA. Whatever policy you have configured on HR context, it is not mandatory that same policy should be there on IT. IT might differ in policy. IT might differ in NAT. IT might differ in anything. IT is having a separate, you know, if you have individual independent air condition in your bedroom, not centralized, then what is the advantage? You can switch off and you can sleep because you don't like much of air conditioning. Or if you're feeling hot, if you're feeling a you know, lot of heat, then you can start. So every individual is having their own choice in this. It is not a centralized policy. It is not a centralized or single box because of with the help of security context, you can go on creating different departments, go on creating multiple contexts, and you can keep them separate with different policies and not only policies, the IP addressing schema also different. See, 192.168.10 is the network of HR, and if you see IT, it is 20. The demilitarized zone subnet is different for HR and for IT it is different. So, in short, I am trying to tell you that virtualization makes you know, this is possible. Security context, keeping things separate. Routing is also separate. I told you, you can also have Sub interface of E0, but I wanted to show you an example where I can give one physical interface to two different contexts also. Possible. It is not mandatory or it is not 
necessary that you should have single should not have a single uh, this thing in the in our case it is single exit gate exit okay so i just kept it physical interface but if suppose i am having two isp so i can differentiate between two isp i can you know, make two different isps communicate so i hope you understood okay now somebody says i want to configure nat now nat configuration will be same only thing is if you think you have a different pool of ip addresses okay different public ip addresses like there is a requirement that company wants to send all the traffic of hr through one of the eyes and they want to send another department traffic through another eyes if it, that is the case what you can do you can even change the pool of ip address in hr and it you don't have to keep the same pool of 20 for translation you can change it so nat also can be configured in the object group or object network and the beauty is when you come to system firewall you can see all this configuration and when you write, you write it for system as well as for all the other contexts also. You see, admin context got saved, HR context got saved, IT context got saved. Got it? Any question? Anyone regarding security context? Adnan, Bakri, Jahangir, Delin, Muhammad, Mujahid. I'm happy today a lot of people join. After a long time, I can see 10 people coming in. Otherwise, only one or two people. Mujahid is coming after a long time, I think. He promised me I'm going to join every day. Pablo also. Okay. Good. Okay. I can understand. But anyway, when you sit for the topic, I hope I always warm me up. You know, I never just go and start telling things. I always warm you up with things. I always tell you the advantage. Uh, I think somebody gave in the group the image. You can just go and download that image. It's the same image what I am having. Okay. Same image. So remember this security context topic is important topics because later on when we go for failover and when we go for active active failover that time we'll be needing this. So I purposely made see basically I'm changing the diagram every time if I want to do something like if you see my normal basic file where it's always like, you know, simple connectivity with one LAN, one DMC and one WAN. But later on for redundant interface, I, I added two interface. For VLANs, I added two, four VLANs, like 10, 20, 30, 40. Now also for security context, I showed you two contexts. I can do it with 20 contexts also. But whatever configuration you do, with these two contexts, same, you can do it with 20 also. Always try to understand the fundamentals. And always try to understand the concept, the features. Okay. And I try to make this as a simple diagram. So when I go to switch, okay, let me show you one more policy where I'm allowing my LAN users to go out for a particular or my LAN users are going there. So one of my LAN users is HR LAN. Okay. He's trying to do telnet to 172.16.10.2. Allowed. So when I go 
and see change to context HR. I can see show you any detail. I can see a TCP connection has been initiated by 192.168.10.2 towards 172.16.10.2. I can also do that. One ninety two one sixty eight ten dot two get knighted with twenty dot one dot one dot ten. When I say shows you any detail, I can see one ninety two one sixty eight ten dot two reaching one seventy two sixteen ten dot two for twenty three. Okay, but when this is only this is a net only for this people, and I showed you my traffic is going out without any problem. I can put a policy also. I will put a policy access list in dash out permit only TCP anybody to sorry. I want my traffic of one ninety two one sixty eight ten dot zero. 255.255.255.0 any equal to 23. Access group in dash out in interface inside. So when now R3 try to do telnet will work. You can see the policy big hit, and definitely connection is also established. Definitely, NAT is also being done. So, when you see on R7 and say who, he will tell you that 21110 has come to me, but 170. See, he know the public IP address of LAN user, not the private IP address. 192.168, no, he don't know. Because my ASA is not sending the traffic with 192.168, he is translating it to 20.1.1.10. So he is also recognizing this as what, 21.1.10. So I hope you understood. Uh, okay. So I hope you understood what I am. I was trying to tell you. Okay. So in this security context, you saw that every time a new virtual MAC address will be there.
Okay, so whenever there is an arc, This is not the physical address of the gateway. Definitely not. Okay. Now I will show you from R4. See, both are enjoying the same physical interface that is E1. But HR is having E1.10 and IT is having E1.20. And if you see, ASA1... Change to system. So interface E1. See what is the MAC address of E1? 5000 and 001. And what you see it on R3. This is not physical MAC address. Okay. Now see, when he tried to call 10.1, he got this MAC address. When now this fellow try to do telnet to 172.16.10.2 change to context IT traffic has gone out but then I told you, no, I should have a route on R1 for 20 network and it should be reachable via 2112. Okay, and this is not valid. So now, once again, if I try to do telnet, now this time when you see R, see, 20.1, see now, both are using same physical interface. This fellow is also using E1. So, in short, E1 is being shared by both departments, no? see, on ASA. So when I give the command MAC address auto, see, and it is in sequence, huh? A200004 here. A200 sub 00C. So though 10.1, our preply is different. 10.1 is the gateway, na? that is, this one is what? 10.20.1. But E1 is being shared by both. Got it? But when you see the ARP table of HRPC, he is getting some different MAC address. When you see the HR ARP table of IT plan user, getting it. In short, if you see, E1 carries some different MAC address. But this MAC address, you can't see it. Even on switch. You can see 4. You can see C. See? You won't see 5000 from E. E0 by 0, whatever. Uh, E1. E1 is connected to E0 by 0 of switch 1. Na? See? VLAN 10 is getting different MAC address for same interface and VLAN 20 is getting different. That is because of this command MAC address auto. So I hope you understood 
what is the significance what is the importance of having security context and what is the meaning of mac address auto what is the requirement of admin context admin how it go, get automatically configured when you change the mode what happens when you change the mode from single to multiple what are the different modes we have in esa we have single mode we have multiple mode Why we need admin context? Because we want to call management interface there. How we are going to manage a single box with multiple contexts through management interface? Where is my management? Configured in admin context. I have given permission. I have created user. So anybody can enter into this box. Clear guys, topic is very important and you have to understand. Just don't, just, you know, commands I can give you, man. But that is not the point. You have to understand why I created this. What is the meaning of config hyphen URL? Why am I locating this interface? In fact, I can do like that also. If I say context, Okay, accounts, suppose. And then I say allocate interface E0. And then I can tell him that I want this to be named as outside accounts. Allocate interface, but first I have to make it one E1 dot something. Say, 10, 20, 30, 40 is done. So I will use 11, suppose. Okay. Let's say we learn 11. And then for E2, 30, 40 is given. No? So I will take 50. We learn, say, 50. Okay. So now I have created accounts. And I said E0 by 0 will be taken as outside account. Now I'll go and E1.11. I will say I want this to be taken as inside account. Which one? E1.11. And then E2.50. I want this as to be DMZ accounts. And whatever I do, I want this to be configured on this zero accounts.cmt. So when I say show run context, see now. E0, I want the name should be outside accounts. E1.11, inside accounts. So when I go and say change to context. And you see show run, you see, same names appear here. Instead of interface, the name appear of those interfaces which was allocated. So it is easy now, you can just go interface outside account, interface inside accounts. Interface DMZ account. I know that outside belongs to outside, inside belongs to inside, and DMZ belongs to DMZ. So I can do this way also. Clear? Naming is also possible. So guys, if you have any question, ask me so that we move on to next topic. Uh, Real-time example, I told you, no, there is a choice. But see what happened now. People who are already having these boxes, they must have configured multiple contexts and they are running. But there is a, some drawbacks also. Like you can't do dynamic routing. You can't do VPN. There are some drawbacks that you're going to face when you go for. But then if you're doing failover and all, 
you definitely need security context. Like I'm talking about active active failovers. You'll definitely need security context. So now the things are like kind of changing. People are preferring next generation firewalls, FTDs, where it works in a different way. But yes, I told you in the beginning also still Cisco is using in the CCI blueprint, if you see, they are using ASA boxes. And some companies already, you know, like suppose I am having LED TV, I purchased last month. And certainly, you know, some new technology comes in. I wouldn't throw my television. I will wait. You won't believe I I am still having LCD TV with me, still operating that. Because when I bought it, I bought it for a you know very it was so costly that time LCD. But later on, people said no LCD is not there, no more. We have LEDs. But still I am operating LCD. Ha. Huh. When I'm planning to buy for my bedroom, I always went for LED TV. But that old LCD TV I'm still having. I'm not replacing. So in a real-time environment, you'll be using this when you have a requirement of firewall for multiple departments, different policies altogether, separate. That is why we created virtual LAN. We don't want it. All of them should come in a single subnet or single domain. We wanted them to be in different, different LAN. That is why we, we instead of, you know, we have physical this thing also. No? Some people are sitting in a different area altogether or different floor. Account floor is different. IT floor is different. HR floor is different. And there are offices where everybody is sitting in the same place. There are cases. Small company, everybody, accounts fellow, the office, office boy, the IT. Marketing, sales, they are all sitting at one location only. So, what is the problem then? Vulnerability. If accounts people is making some balance sheet, you will come to know what is the profit of your company. Why? Because accounts fellow is sitting next to user. If he's preparing a balance sheet with profit and loss, he will come to know. But if the account department is different, security is there. You, can't, you won't come to know. If a salesperson is talking to someone and trying to sell a box or trying to sell a service, like, you know, so, okay, my engineer will come and configure this. He will charge 50,000 rupees for that one-time installation or servicing. Salesperson is telling like that. <laughs> and then he, he sends an engineer which is paid only 10,000 rupees per month. So no, immediately that engineer will think that for this work, I am being paid 10,000 rupees per month and the job is being taken at 50,000 per hour or one time charges is 50,000. That means my five month salary is already being taken by the company. Just telling you the example. Okay. So when you want to separate things, you go for this. Every department needs a separate, every department is having a separate requirement of policies that then they will go for security context, virtual firewall. But I told you as I, I told you earlier yesterday also, you need a license. If you don't have a license, you can't do it. So the first thing you have to do is what? Change the, check the license. Where? System. System is like a living room, I told you. No? Every time, if you want to enter into bedroom, you first enter a living room, that is system firewall. And from there, you go to HR context, IT context, accounts context, admin context. Security plus license or VPN plus license. Clear?
Let me see what is the next topic. You already did time range also. I showed you. Okay. So we'll go for failover. I will show you failover. Okay. Still time is there. So I'll show you failover. Now, what is failover? Today we won't do practical. We just discuss what is failover. So, failover means like fail, some box fail, and then take on. It is also called redundancy. You always, you know, I I used to follow this trend. You know, I mean, my parents used to follow this trend even when I was in school. That we used to go and buy two uniforms. So if I am going to school on Monday and for, you know, we used to be like, you know, very naughty in school. I also used to be naughty. So I used to fight with people, fight with friends. And sometimes the inks, you know, from the ball, uh, earlier ball, uh, ball pens were not allowed. You know, ink pens. So we used to have inks on our shirt white shirt was there and a tie was there so there was a chance that while playing football or in the school while playing football or while uh, doing naughtiness in the school we used to class we used to get our dress dirty so no problem when we come back definitely we we'll get some kicks from mom that you have spoiled your shirt with this ink but then Next morning, you see a next uniform is totally ready ironed. It's not possible to wash that shirt immediately and give it to you next morning. But redundancy was there. So always we do redundancy in our, you know, when you buy uh, watches also, we buy then one watch so that we can change it on dresses. So all those Items which are important and you cannot stay without that item. You do return it. Like we always have, some people are crazy about shoes. So they'll have multiple pair of shoes. And then they go on changing. Something happens, immediately change it. So we buy clothes also, multiple shirts. So one day we wear one shirt, second day another color, third day another color, fourth day another color. And some celebrities, they wear only for once. Okay. God gifted them with money. So they, so redundancy, failover, high availability, these are all a term being used. So in ASA, in security, we have a term called failover. Anything happens to one of the firewalls. See, uh, we give contracts to security groups or security organizations because we don't want, like suppose one one of one day, I know the security is not turning up. Who's going to look after the security? Who's going to take care of the security? It is necessary that you should have a backup. Like always you have seen movies, there is always a backup plan. Plan A, plan B, plan C. So same way, if one of the security is not well, immediately the next security should be available. So in fact, you see in office also we have a two office boy. Redundancy. Now, when you are having one person as an office boy, like suppose example, I was working for a company where I used to, you know, early morning I used to go and give the lectures at 7 a.m. Before going to office, I go to this classes and offer the lecture. I was part-time doing this. So I remember I used to get up like, you know, early morning, say 5, to reach at 7. And all the other, all those students also who are attending this batch are struggling for, you know, 
you know they are they have paid the fees and sincerely want to upgrade themselves and their office timing is say 10 a.m. but they are getting up at 5 to reach a class for 7 a.m. and then 7 to 9 the class was there and they used to run to office like 10 a.m. they have to reach office so see to reach 10 a.m. if they don't have class they can get up at say 8 and you can easily go to office but then they have to get up at 5 now like I myself getting up at 5, reaching there at 7 or 6.45, 15 minutes before the student, I see the office is closed or the class is shutter is down. So what is the issue? Today that office boy or the peon who is, is not turning back because he's not well or I don't know, something happened. You know? Sometimes some people have night out songs. So this guy used to have a night out drinking problem. He used to drink and early morning the office is not open. The class is not open. So what happened? After some time seven uh, students also coming in and standing and everybody is frustrated. Why? Because many times what happened is uh, the issue is that you you don't want to get up. Some some seasons are like that. Then you feel very lazy. Suppose you are sleeping late or the climate is good. You don't want to get up. But then still you are forcing yourself to get up early. And then when you reach the place after struggling from sleep, you find out that today class won't be conducted. And then there is a frustration level. So there was a lot of complaints and finally they came out with a solution that will always have a redundant second office board. So they did what? Like, you know, they asked or they hired one more office, one more, one more you know, second guy as an office boy that is fellow or redundant. A redundant office boy or a backup. Now everything became very why? Because if this guy is not turning up for say till 7.15 then this is a you know, period of second office boy to jump in or to come in picture. So this guy was staying very near like you know, hardly 5 minutes distance. Second guy. So if he come to know because there is some communication going on between office boy 1 and office boy 2. And in case if we come to know office boy 2 that he is not turning up today, by 7.15 is the, the time off. Then he will immediately pick up the keys and run and come and open the office. So what is the, the delay? Only 15 minutes. See, I can wait for 15 minutes and even... Students can wait for 15. They're traveling all the way and coming here for the session. And the session is delayed for 15 minutes. Like many times, our session is also delayed. No, I send the invite uh, invite or link and then people join. Then I'm waiting for the setup, everything. And then finally, 15 minutes are gone. So many times people have seen, you know, they join who are very punctual, waiting for the session, start asking. When will the lecture start? But then people can understand. You know, we can understand. Okay, 15 minutes, okay. Like, but then if I am not taking the session for half an hour or one hour, people will get irritated or frustrated. They might leave, leave the session or they might you know, tell something. Like I am waiting from last one hour. Nobody is uh, informing us that today there is no session or when the session will start, these kind of messages will come, 100%. But then, things started moving smoothly because one of the office boys not turning till 7.15. Immediately, you see a second office boy comes and open the door and shut up and we can start the session. So, delay is only for 15 minutes. So, this is 
redundancy. This is backup. And in firewall, we call this as active and standby. The first fundamental of failover is active and standby. So who is active? The first office boy is active. Why? Because he is a senior person. He knows everything properly. He knows how to clean the office. He knows everything. Everything. And the second one is a new guy and he's just a back. Standby. So when the term is active, means he is going to work. That's all. And when it comes to standby, he will only work when active is not turning up or active is down. So this was really interesting, you know. But then later on, it became a problem also. Because now the first guy of his boy who was misbehaving in his duty and suddenly the company brought the second guy because of his misbehavior or some bad habits in the night, parties, everything and then he's not. So now he is feeling ashamed and now he is regular. Regular means last three to four months is continuously coming to office. So now there is the problem. What is the problem? The first senior guy or first office boy is working hard and last three months without any extra leave. I'm not talking about week offs. Extra leave, he's punctual in his timing. He opens the office at 6 a.m. When we go there, it's already open and clean with tea and water, everything ready. So we are happy with this guy. Then what about the second guy? <laughs> so see, just because we are happy, he's punctual in three months, we can't remove the second guy. We have to pay him salary because he is a standby. But the problem is he is not doing anything. Last three months, he's sitting idle and just doing what? Follow. Follow up means what? Are you coming to office? He says, yes, I'm already, you know, I'm just ready, already moving from my house, reaching office at 6 a.m. So he said, okay. And he continuously sync with him. And when he come to know that he's come to office, then he go to sleep. Why? Because he's standby. So last three, four months, he is just taking salary for doing nothing. <laughs> He's just standby. But then company cannot just remove him. You know? Just because he is the first one is active and working properly. But the company is... And the, the first office boy is also feeling very bad in terms of work. He is doing everything last three, four months. And he's paid some X salary. And he's not getting increment also now because the company is having a burden of a standby. And they are continuously paying him also salary for standby. And he's doing nothing. Why? Because the instruction is only active is going to work. Standby is not going to work. Ha. In case if active fails, then standby will work. But what is the ratio? So somebody said, you know, in these three months, at least everything was working fine. Once or twice, this guy didn't turn up or late. So this fellow came in picture. But otherwise, my first firewall is continuously working and active. So what is the role of the second firewall? See, I have paid money to bring this firewall. I have purchased a firewall. It's a box with same configuration. This is the prerequisite of doing failover that you have to buy box with similar configuration. Same. Model also same. IS version also same. Interface is also same. Sub version. Like if you are using 9.5 bracket 2 example then the sub version also should be same. Licensing for failover also should be there on both the boxes. Everything exactly same to same. So if company is spending such a lot of money on the second box and 
not being utilized because following the funda or following the concept of active standby, then this is not good. So they thought of going for the second option that is active, active failure. Now this is a really good concept because in this concept, both the boxes are going to work at the same time. Like I said, no. I also felt bad that this guy is continuously working. First guy and the second guy is just acting as a standby without doing anything. Is getting salary. So I said, okay, let's do one thing. I am having ten cabins. So let the first one come at six. Clean the five cabins. Let the second one come say after 4 hours or 5 hours. So now what happened now? I am getting what this office boy working for the whole day. Say might be 12 hours or might be 14 hours or 16 hours. Earlier both are working for 8 hours or one is working for 8 hours, second is not working at all and he's just a standby. So I made a shift and I'm utilizing both. Huh. But then there is a one condition also. That yes, in case the first one or second one is not coming to office for some reason, the first one has to do everything. Like, you know, if he's cleaning five cabins, he's coming at so and so time. He has to extend his time also. He has to clean all the cabins also. In case if second one don't turn up, the first one will do. In case the first one will not turn up, the second one do. So now this is very rare. No? It's not always. Every day one of the office boy cannot remain absent. It's say once in a quarterly, once in three months or once in a month. So can I, if one of the firewall is not working, then second firewall will take care of the first well, or first firewalls work or job and if second is not working for some reason then first one will take so in active active what happens both are simultaneously serving the traffic both are working and both are helping the company to filter the traffic okay so one one fellow, Adnan is having a question that I have a question when active standby, two firewalls are working or configured in an environment, whatever we make is the active fire. Of course, in ASC firewall, if you are doing any configuration for active standby, you don't have to do it for the second one. You have to do it on the first firewall and it will get automatically synced to first, second file. That is the standby file. Okay. That is for sure. Now your second question is, can we use active, active? If yes, then where and how it will impact? So just now I told you the example that why I'm using active, active, because I cannot make, I cannot waste my second box without doing anything. I want to utilize this second box like just now you saw. We created multiple contacts. So suppose we created 10 contacts. We created only two. But assume we create 10 contacts. So we have a scope or we have a chance now here to allocate one box to that five contacts, another box to another five contacts. So what will happen? My ASA1 will serve five contacts my ASA2 will work or serve second or another set of five contacts. In worst case, if my ASA1 goes down, the second one will serve 10 contacts. So this is the advantage if you're going for active active failure. And it is not going to impact anything. In fact, it is going to make both of them happy. The first one will be definitely happy. No, I told you. He was not happy because he was not getting increment. He was not getting rest also. And the second one is getting salary. He is continuously resting only because the, cha the challenge or the fundamental is the concept is 
only active is going to work. Uh, standby is not going to work. Standby is just going to act as a standby. It's not going to work at all until unless he gets the job of active. Or in case failover takes place, then only he will do. So there is no impact in active active. It is in fact benefit when you go for active active work. In fact, you are making both of them work at the same time. Both of them serve the traffic. You are utilizing both the boxes. Like example, you bought two pair of shoes. Many times you get tempted when you go to shop and the sales people are very stupid or you can say they are very good. Okay. You go and you know you're planning to buy one shoe of one pair of shoes, but this salesperson will make you attract to multiple pairs, and then you will see, okay, I love this one also. Yeah, this color or this uh, quality, everything is so good, man. I got attracted. I tell me what is the price. But then I also love this color also. Yeah, this is also good. So the sales people will the sales person will image oh sir buy both of both of both pair it will be very good for you sometime you can wear this sometime you can wear this so people will also love to see you in different pairs so what you are going to do you are going to buy both the pair you you know you got tempted you got convinced by the sales person you got some discount also if you are buying two pair I will give you so and so much discount so you tempted but what is the stupidity you're doing you're coming in and telling your parents okay, i bought two pairs so your mom is telling now do one thing keep this one pair in the cupboard or somewhere in you know in the storeroom and don't take out until you your first pair goes bad so suppose your first pair runs for two years two years. Till that two years, you won't remove the second pair. What, because what is the condition? Until unless the first pair goes bad, don't remove the second pair. Now the problem is, this happened. Huh? I am not allowing my son to wear the second pair. And when, finally, after two years, when the pair got bad, I immediately take out, you know, took that pair and give it to my son. My son is telling, now my feet is a bigger one, this set is useless, you can throw away. <laughs> Why? Because you know the kids are growing. So always the feet, the size of the the pair of shoes was after two years. Can you imagine? So normally people never do that. You know, if I'm buying two pair of shoes, I always use both simultaneously. Like I will use one pair one day with jeans or trouser and I will go for another pair with some other uh, dress and I will see that both are being used. But in worst case, suppose rainy season is there and one of the pair got bad or got dirty, then definitely I have a redundant pair of shoes which I can use. So as per your question, I hope you understood that why we have active active failure and why there is no impact. In fact, people buy more pairs and they you know, use it all the pairs. They won't keep it like if one goes bad, then only I will use the second. If you are doing that, change your habit because that is active standby. <laughs> until unless my first pair goes bad, I am not going to use my second pair. Or until unless my first shirt is, you know, if it is torn, then only I will remove the second shirt. Then better you start wearing the second shirt because you never know you might become slim or you might become uh, you might put on weight and your shirt will be gone bad till that date. It can happen for trousers also. So I hope you understood the example. I hope you understood what I was trying to tell you in this failover scenario. I will technically also ex explain you and show you how it works how things work, how the MAC address is learned, how active standby failover actually works. Okay. Everything technical. This was just an example I gave you to 
make you understand that what is the meaning of active standby, what is the meaning of active active, what is the advantage you're going to get, okay, everything. We'll speak technically tomorrow, how actually it works and we'll also see practical. But before practical, the theory concept has to be very, very clear in your mind that what exactly is failure. And remember, this is not just related to one firewall. It is a common topic. Like just I said, DSCP is a common topic. NAT is a common topic. Routing is a common topic. Static routing is a common topic. Ether channel is a common topic. It's not related to Cisco. Any firewall you buy, you have to configure policy. Any firewall you buy, you have to do NAT if you are using IPv4 in front of you. Any firewall you buy, you have to do you know, uh, some kind of, uh, what do you say, uh, bundling. So if you are you know, if you are doing that bundling, you go for uh, Ether channel. You, you might go for clustering. That would be the feature of that firewall, GUI. Every firewall now supports GUI. So remember, topics are not just related to Cisco firewall. It is a common topic. And if you really understand those topics, then you can handle any firewall, follow all topics. I can understand the configuration part, the GI part, the loop part of all the firewalls will be different. But see, I what I am always trying to tell my student that if you learn how to drive, then in whichever car you set, the steering will be there, the brake will be there. I'm not talking about automatic, manual. Everywhere you will see the clutch, everywhere you will see the brake, everywhere you see the accelerator, steering, left mirror, right mirror. Okay, only difference will be the car height, the speed, the uh, uh, you know, the less, uh, luxurious part and everything will be different and the cost. Otherwise, driving everywhere is same. Okay, so keep in mind that whenever you are learning and now any topic, it can be a common topic for all the firewalls. I hope you understood what I mean to say. I hope you like the session. Okay. So we'll end our session today here only and we'll do tomorrow the continuity of failover. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions, guys? So bye, take care. Thank you.